Oh, it is bigger. It's bigger than you might think. Running from De Maupin, the west end of the islands and the airport, under the mountain and out across the Saint Laurent to Brossard. Initially started by underappreciated Montreal Mayor Denis Corder, it has continued on track into this administration. At 67 kilometers with 26 stations, it doubles the length of Montreal's rapid transit network. So get ready to say this for the first time in ages. We're number one. Suck it, Toronto. Ah, oh, they don't care. The rim is an autonomous light rail system. Yeah, it's the SkyTrain. But in Montreal, le train de sel. For most people, it'll halve the time it takes on current transit. Basically, the transit times are the same as driving with absolutely no traffic. Remember traffic, guys? Ah, oh, I miss traffic. For people on the South Shore, it'll do even better than a car on a traffic-free day, allowing you to get to downtown in just 15 minutes. Much of the extent of the rim runs above ground on viaducts, with portions below in densely populated areas like downtown. The new Champlain Bridge was built with it in mind and has tracks in the center to accommodate the system. Why am I talking like this? The city also acquired the Montreal Tunnel from CN during the Coderre administration to use for the project. It's currently being retrofitted for signaling, and that's why you may have uh, heard of disruption on some of the commuter lines. The project is being overseen by the Caisse de Depot et Placement de Quebec's infrastructure division. It's mostly financed by them with large contributions from the government of Quebec and the Canadian Infrastructure Bank, the Feds. The cost of the project was initially $6.3 billion! around $100 million per kilometer, which is actually really cheap in infrastructure terms. It's about half the price of the Confederation Line in Ottawa per kilometer. So, so far, so good. Hopefully it's not as much of a clusterfuck, but Canada's most morally bankrupt company is in there, so... Ah, well, you know, it's not too bad for an infrastructure project. This sort of stuff happens. Well, at least the costs aren't being borne by uh, Montreal, it's only coming out of everyone's retirement fund. The Caisse de Depot has created two contracts. There would be four contracts. One is for the rolling stock, which has gone to a consortium of Alstom and SNC. The other contract was for the infrastructure, and that went to SNC, Dragados, and some other listing names not great in the video. So SNC is in this. SNC and Alstom were also in the Ottawa Confederation line build which hasn't gone super well. They said they cleaned up their act, but unless this company proves otherwise, it's a total predator, and its den sits right in the middle of downtown Montreal, feeding on everyone. Quebec might think that we're doing good feeding this wolf, local jobs, etc., but fuck me have we paid for that in corruption and cost overruns over the years. Kickbacks over Montreal bridge refurbishments, literal briefcases of money to politicians across the whole region, bribery and collusion for the massive cost overruns of the super hospital, and in case you forgot, just last year they caused a political scandal after bribing and then being caught trying to rescue a mass murdering dictator, Muammar Gaddafi. On June the 29th, 1996, in this prison yard, 1,200 men were gunned down in two hours. Their bodies have never been recovered. On top of that, they got caught circumventing campaign finance laws to put money into the Liberal Party, whose leader has then, unsurprisingly, been trying to help them escape justice. This is the so-called victimless crime that our woke feminist prime minister is moving mountains to cover up. When did the prime minister learn that SNC-Lavalin paid for prostitutes for Muammar Gaddafi's son? Right honourable prime minister. Speaker, every step of the way, we will stand up for Canadian workers. We will stand up for good jobs right across this country. And we will the World Bank has actually barred them from bidding on contracts for a decade over bribery and misrepresentation on our Bangladeshi bridge contract. Yet, here they are, all over our most important infrastructure project in 50 years. Oh god, that's no, fine. It's, it's probably nothing. Canada has actually been slipping in corruption indexes and it's solely because of this one company. SNC is to corruption what tar sands are to pollution. So whose fault is this? It's our fault! We didn't hold the politicians to account, so they aren't holding SNC to account. This is how you end up with a culture of corruption. So I hope we can agree. If they fuck us over, that it's a 10-year ban on provincial contracts. Not again. The line must be drawn here! This far, no farther! Can we establish that the people of Quebec deserve at least Bangladeshi levels of government accountability. In the wise words of President Bush, Fool me once, 
Shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. Well, you get the point. The section going to the South Shore is gonna be completed first, probably in 2022, because of the bad thing. Hey, the same year as another Quebec achievement, our world-class electoral system. The whole thing was to be finished in 2023, but um, yeah, let's just fix that. COVID. And uh, oh yeah, of course, uh, just fucking SNC. I have to say, this project was looking pretty good before the bad thing. Stuff was moving really quickly, and it seemed to be in a good uh, hands. However, we'll probably see some cost and time overruns because it, it's just the nature of these large infrastructure projects. The standard international measure for cost overruns is actually uh, Olympic stadiums. So let's have a look at where we are now. That's great. Only one out of ten Olympic stadiums. When it comes to controversies or issues, there are a few surrounding room. The first one is incredibly predictable. Rich people don't want to be negatively impacted by anything. Any odorous plant should be 15, 15 kilometers away from the airport. This is 2.1 kilometers. Honestly, don't care. It's funny when a transit line goes into a poor neighborhood, they're like, oh, awesome. Well, this will save me half an hour on the buses. When a transit line goes into a rich neighborhood, they're like, oh, the vibrations are ruining the infinity effect on my infinity pool. <laughs> I know that it's only a vocal minority, even in these wealthy neighborhoods, but with these NIMBY folks, it's like, Jesus Christ. Back of Napkin, the rim would cost at least five times more if it was put underground. It just wouldn't get built. There's a lot of people taking one for the team along the route, but it's always the affluent neighborhoods that complain and try to get special treatment from the government over these things. I do hope that tunneling technology gets cheap enough to put sections of this underground one day. <laughs> we do actually now own a, a hole boring machine, but it's prohibitively expensive at this density for now. The most legitimate is the Dorval extension issue. So the REM makes it all the way out to the airport, but it doesn't connect to the Dorval via rail station. It would mean fewer empty trains on the airport line as well as being able to increase their frequency. But additionally, it's very common for people living in Ottawa to book a flight from Montreal and then take the train down. But with the current plan, they'll still have to take a shuttle from that station this missed opportunity does seem like it slipped through the cracks. Maybe the metrics that they had for placing stations didn't quite factor in uh, the value of completing the intermodal connection and adding an additional neighborhood. Or maybe I'm just an idiot. Absolutely. Meanwhile, in Lavelle, is the, does Lavelle have a slogan? No. Lavelle. It still counts. Citizens have been suing the government over the temporary closure of the commuter line, which is really crazy. I think a lot of people out there just believe that they're getting one train replaced with another train, but that's really not the case. They're basically getting a seven day a week, like regular service metro station. I really like this line from a citizen in the Laval Courier. Jat le prend le ram, mais je d'oubli. So stupid, like, of course. Stoked to take the train, but worried about the noise. It's like, fucking all no shit. Like, what's the government supposed to do with it information, you know? Oh yeah, that's right. Thanks for voicing your concerns. Jesus Christ. The other thing they've been doing is requesting more REM in Laval. It looks kind of crazy when you look at a population density map that the REM went here and over there, but it didn't jump over the river to the core of Laval. This continues a long, pretty hilarious tradition of pissing in Laval's cornflakes. Story time. <laughs> Can't touch that. Expo 67 actually had the first automated mass transit system in uh, North America, the uh, Expo Express. Actually, it's probably in this um, book over here. This is the uh, British pin from the uh, Expo 67. Um, we've got to do a video on that one day. Expo 67 is sometime after French colonial, English colonial. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, it was capable of carrying a thousand people out to the island and back. And this is quite different from the uh, rinky dinky monorail thing that was basically a ride on the site. I think a lot of people mix those two up. It was so early with the automation thing that they actually had a guy um, posing as a driver so people wouldn't freak out about like being on a train run by no one. So once the expo was over, the mayor of Laval backed a bid of $2 million to buy the cars and link Laval to the end of the metro line at the time. For some reason though, Montrealers went insane and started this whole Save the Expo Express campaign. We love the train! She is beautiful, yeah! Which makes no sense to me because all that Laval was proposing was moving the 
express from one side of the island where no one was using it to the other side of the island. But Montreal was not having any of it. The city capitulated and said, okay, we'll keep it. But secretly they were like, what the fuck are we gonna do with this goddamn train? So they tried to sell it to Edmonton, who were on the verge of building the first of these modern light rail systems on the continent in 1978. Could have been us, but the deal fell through. Eventually the unused rails got dismantled and the cars sat in storage until the 90s uh, when they got scrapped. Laval basically said they would pay us a dollar for the scraps of our sandwich. And then Montreal was like, no, and chucked the whole thing in the garbage. They had to wait until 2007 to get the orange line. A friend of mine told me that his grandfather had waited his whole life for the line and then died the year it got built, which I don't know. I feel like I might be that old man one day, you know? And Montreal was like, yeah, whatever, Laval. So we have this very long history of not factoring in Laval, which meant that it took us 50 more years than it needed to for the area to get light rail. And I know, you might say, look, Laval sucks. Its main export is Honda Civic mods and, and popcorn lung. Laval is so far behind Montreal that it's only just getting around to having government corruption. But you shouldn't be so cruel. Montagne cruel, Saïb. Laval has a similar population to Quebec City, and it's kind of crazy that we didn't connect them to a rim properly. Have you seen their city's symbol, by the way? Summary, this is gonna be a game changer for the town. When you compare it to other projects, the price is more than reasonable. For now. And despite what I said about SNC, I hope it works out well and they do redeem themselves. If they do deliver, we should be asking them to hook up the whole island. Some of that is already underway, so subscribe because a follow-up video is in the works. And that is VREM. I think I've said it all. Come on.